Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Whitfield, Ranking Member Rush, and members of the subcommittee. As a former committee counsel, it's a particular honor to be back today. As noted, I'm here on behalf of the Electric Power Supply Association. EPSA is the National Trade Association for Competitive Wholesale Electricity Suppliers. Our members supply electricity across the country with a particular emphasis on states and regions with independent grid operators. This means they're major sources of electricity from Maine down here to Virginia in states across from the Mid-Atlantic to my home state of Illinois, and particularly in Texas and California. The subcommittee is wise to focus on the challenges already discussed. Today's headlines focus on natural gas, but we should also be asking ourselves what will be the headlines of tomorrow? What will be the game changers next year or over the next decade? EPSA believes that competitive electricity markets are best able to adapt to these changes and our written testimony focuses on three particular challenges that I'll summarize now. Electric gas coordination, a new topic that Chairman Whitfield referred to called demand response, and finally, variable resources. First, on electric gas coordination, I think it's important to point out that gas fire generators already have as much interest and financial incentive as anyone in making sure gas can be delivered to their power plants to generate electricity. This is because in competitive markets such as New England and Texas and elsewhere, these plants do not earn revenue from generating electricity unless they can get, get gas to run. They do not have a regulated rate base. The important message we would leave with you is that today and going forward, these plants procure fuel many ways, only one of which is through a firm long-term transportation arrangement that the pipelines just referred to. Instead, power plants today to serve consumers of electricity reliably but well as cost effectively have many other options. Package products from producers and gas marketers with packages that include both the gas supply and the transportation, interruptible service, capacity release, and delivery from gas distribution utilities. These generators need continued access to this full suite of options to tailor their gas supply arrangements to the type of plant location and market being served. These options generally work well, as evidenced by the substantial increased utilization of gas-fired power plants that many of you have already referred to. We're in agreement with Inga that electric gas issues vary by region, and regional solutions are best, and FERC is acting accordingly. FERC and grid operators are vigilant, as you heard at the hearing last month, New England is appropriately seen as the region with the most pressing challenges, and our regional trade association there is co-chairing the regional effort, looking at these issues in depth. FERC recently acted to improve the scheduling times for gas and electricity, which will help, and active consideration is being given at the state level to possibly encouraging gas utilities to procure more firm pipeline capacity, but the regional market is also looking to actively consider changes to electric market rules. The second topic I'd like to mention is one not often considered here but should be, and that's called demand response. Demand response entails programs in which most energy consumers, particularly residential and commercial customers, pay others, primarily industrial customers, for them to use less electricity. In what's called Order 745, FERC went beyond its authority, in our view and the view of the other national electricity associations, to pay this demand response as if it were generation, and we and those other associations are presently in the federal court here in the District of Columbia and the Court of Appeals challenging that order. No amount of demand response can substitute for the substantial supplies of actual megawatts from real power plants of all kinds needed to continue to serve consumers reliably. This year, as Chairman Whitfield mentioned, EPA issued a rule exempting behind-the-meter diesel generators from Clean Air Act requirements applicable to other generators. This allows owners of these unregulated diesel generators to link up as virtual power plants to merely shift, not actually reduce their demand, and still get paid by other consumers as demand response. This diverts consumer dollars away from cleaner generation. It has also been flagged as a reliability concern in PJM by the Independent Market Monitor. Demand response subsidies and policies deserve greater scrutiny, as at present they adversely impact every supply option, gas, coal, nuclear, and renewables. And on the third challenge in terms of intermittent resources, the, the point we would leave with you is really twofold. One is that the larger regional markets that we favor, because they're larger, can handle the intermittent resources better, and natural gas-fired power plants that are needed to back up these intermittent resources need to be properly compensated. 
And with that, I thank you for the opportunity to be here, and we look forward to the questions.